Welcome, welcome. We'll wait a few minutes and see if more people want to join. Let me know if you guys are here. Give me a shout out. Um, I haven't been on here in a while live, so I'm a little rusty. So bear with me. I'm also sewing with a boot on my foot. So I sew with my left foot instead of my right foot. So sometimes <laughs> it's a little fun. Um, we are going to sew up the Conan bowler bag from Country Cow Designs. I just love, love, love her patterns. And I did do one of these already to kind of play with it and try it out. Um, my gusset didn't fit great. So I'm hoping maybe second time's a charm and it fits a little bit better the second time around. Um, hello, yay. All right, we're getting some people on here. So I usually have a little bit more prepped before I start my video. I was running late this morning, still moving just a little bit slow. Thank you guys. Yep, we had lots of sickness in our house, mainly with me over the last month. So I still get pretty tired. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sew up my crossbody strap. Um, usually I have that done and I just didn't get around to it this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. And I will go over the pieces as I'm sewing it up. I'm mainly doing vinyl and waterproof canvas for this bag. I am not doing the card slot lining like she has in the pattern just for time's sake. Um, I'm just gonna do a regular zipper pocket. I did have foot surgery, Cindy, which is why I have my boot on. So hopefully I have about a week left in the boot and hopefully my foot will be brand new. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> but I'm almost done with the boot, so that's kind of nice. Hi everybody, yay, hello from Colorado. All right, so thank you, Marsha. Hi, Lulu, Terry, Barbara, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my crossbody strap. And we'll just start making this adorable bag and chatting along the way. Let me know, I'm gonna move this down just a little bit and get this set into place. Hello, everybody. I know it's morning, middle of the day here. Hopefully it's a good time for most people. All right, about right there hopefully works. All right, let's start this. Hi. Oh no, Cindy, you're in a boot too? It's not very fun, especially when it snows and then you have to trek through the snow in a boot. That's kind of the worst, actually. We'll do it though. Hi, Kajersti. Hi, Brittany. All right. I'm just doing a one inch crossbody strap. Just folding my raw edges in and then folding it again and sewing it up. Nothing too fancy about that part. Uh, Teresa, I just had really bad plantar fasciitis in my foot that would not heal itself. So we had to help it along. So hopefully it gets much better after this and I can feel normal. Yay. Lots of awesome people on here. Thanks for joining guys. Sorry I've been gone for so long. <laughs> I'll try to get back at it. Sorry, I have to do the crossbody strap on camera. I usually do that before I start filming. Hi, Cynthia. You made it. I hope you guys all had a good holiday. My son was home. It was very nice. Besides the fact we were all sick. <laughs> all right, I'm going to sew up this strap now. Hey, 
Hello. Let me know what questions you guys have for me. Thank you, yes, much better. I just have that COVID tiredness and my, my taste is still funky. Like things don't taste good to me still, so that kind of stinks. I am using, this is purple vinyl from So Pretty Vinyl, and I absolutely love it. Hi from Greece. What time is it in Greece? I think it's like in the evening, right? I just know that my house is quiet for the first time in month in like a month. So I thought it would be a good time. bag yes the new bag sock pattern felicity kathy i have it is pretty awesome i love bag stock what type of bag do you suggest for a beginner bag maker i just did a really cute bag from Kaya Papaya. They're doing a beginner basics collection. It was called the Eden and it is a perfect beginner handbag. I just did that tutorial at the beginning of this week. I would suggest something like that, just something very basic. A tote, a basic tote is always good. here. I'm going to just put my hardware on it real quick. Hi from Nova Scotia. Hello, Tracy. Okay, so I'm just putting my slider on. I'm just going to sew that on and then I will also put rivets in it too. I always like to do rivets on my straps just to give it that little extra reinforcement. I will put a rivet right there, but I can do that after the fact. So I'm gonna put my slider on, or my slider, my swivel clip, and I'm gonna go up and down my slider. How long ago did I have COVID? It was right before New Year's, so not that long ago. It was right after Christmas that we all got it. I feel like everybody's had it this last round crazy. All right. And then I'm just putting my other end of my swivel clip on this side and I'll do a rivet on this as well. I'll do it later when I'm putting rivets on the bag. And we'll just rivet everything at once. All right. Strap is done. There we go. Crossbody strap, I'm gonna put that aside. All right, let's start with this bag. So I am going to start with the handle. All right, so 
This is my handle. It's vinyl. I'm just, uh, it's new kids on the block. <laughs> I have been wanting to use this fabric for a while. Um, let me get my marking stuff here. Hi, Cindy. Yes, you did. Yeah, and this COVID is bad this round. It's kind of crazy. We're all vaccinated here, but we still got it. So I don't know, guys. I'm lucky, or I'm happy that we're through it, and hopefully we don't have to deal with it again. All right. I'm just going to fold my handle like you do the crossbody strap. I see you leave the turned edge of your, yes, I, on vinyl, I just leave my edges raw. If I really want to fancy it up a bit, I'll put some cute strap-ins on the end of my straps to cover up those raw edges, but I'm not doing that on this one. Oh, thank you, Paula. Happy New Year to you too. All right. Just folding my raw edges in. Now there's a couple options for this uh, handle. You can do an accent, an accent handle piece. It's optional. I'm not gonna do it. On this one, it's very cute. And um, if you're trying to just, you know, turn it up one more notch, I would highly suggest doing it. But I'm not gonna do it on this one because I like the, I like the print. Okay, so for this, you're going to sew down each side one fourth of an inch from the edge on each side. And let me know how this angle is. Hopefully, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, there is sickness everywhere right now, guys. It is just a little crazy. Oh, welcome, Invisible Angel. That's how I see your name. I don't know what your first name is, but welcome. Oh, I just did this wrong, guys. <laughs> Shoot, I did an eighth of an inch. That'll only matter um, for when we sew it onto our handle. I'll just have to go over that same stitching. So that's okay. I need to pay attention. All right, <laughs> a fourth of an inch. I'm just gonna leave that stitching there because it's really not gonna make that big of a difference. It's just that when you stitch it onto your bag, you're stitching at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'll just be stitching over those same stitches. It's okay. All right, so a fourth of an inch on my edge now here. At least I caught it before I was all done. Oh, thank you, Annette. If I miss a question, please just ask it again. I'm not trying to ignore. I will try to look up as much as possible. I love Country Cow Designs too. She is one of my favorites and she's an awesome person as well. All right, and then down the other side. There's my handle and we want to do some markings on it and then I'm going to set it aside. Okay. So I really like for vinyl. I love these pins that Lauren Mormino sells. They're for vinyl and they wipe off really nice. Um, she sells them on her website. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but they are 
awesome pins. They come with ink refills. Highly suggest these. Okay, so we have four markings that you need to do on each side of the handle. I'm not gonna say them out loud. Look at the um, pattern and you'll be able to see what the markings are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those markings real quick. And those are just important for when we are putting this onto our bag. We're gonna need to know what these markings are, okay? And you do it on both sides. Make sure you got it right side up each time. <laughs> okay. Uh... All right, so I got my handle all sewn up and marked. I'm gonna set that aside, okay? And now we're going to work on our main zipper panel for the top of the bag. All right, so I have my zip. Um, Tracy, she sews all of her bags on a domestic machine. So yes, they are very domestic machine friendly. Um, I would just, you know, I'm using heavier material because I have an industrial. Um, she uses cotton and cork for this on her domestic, so, and she doesn't use vinyl for the handle. So you just need to pay attention to your thickness on your bag. But yes, these are domestic machine friendly. Thank you, Brittany. She's got that silver marking pen link for you guys. It's from uh, Mormino, and it's awesome. I am just clipping my centers real quick on everything. It'll just help it all line up better. I'm doing it on my inside and outside pieces. Yeah, this purple vinyl, oh, I love it so much. I'm doing my next two, next three bags I think I have cut out or with this vinyl, this purple vinyl, because I love it so much. All right. Again, I'm just clipping my centers. You should have four pieces here, two lining, two exterior, and a zip. So I put a double pull on my zipper tape. It's just number five zipper tape, okay? And I am going to do the tiniest of clips on my zipper tape. And somebody told me, I think maybe it was Brittany, right Brittany, that you also melt or you clip, which I think is fabulous. So I'm gonna do that. Cause then it really won't unravel. And then you really have, I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. It makes like two little V shapes, perfect for seeing your center. Okay, here we go. I need my clips. This part, very simple. We're just gonna take our exterior. I'm doing my large gusset first. I'm lining up my centers right there. And I'm gonna baste first, and then I will add the other side for the lining. And then I'll sew that up. Yep, that's my new favorite way to do the zippers, Brittany. Clip and melt. I think it works so good. Just a minute. There we go. All right. And I am using my Text 70 thread from my website. It is the, hmm, which one is this color? It's the darker purple one. Again, I'm just basting, so I baste at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just basting this zip on. Okay. 
And um, I forgot to mention in the beginning that I did interface all of my pieces with Decaville Light. All right, I'm not using heavy because I'm doing vinyl. So I did interface with Decaville Light out of my seam allowances on all of my exterior pieces. All right. Hi, sister. Aren't you supposed to be holding babies right now? She's supposed to be at the hospital holding babies. Okay, so I'm gonna take my lining piece now, um, right sides together, make a little sandwich, and now we're going to sew at our full seam allowance. I love that my sister gets on here. <laughs> Susan, I'm sewing a new kids on the block bag. You should see the vinyl for this, it's amazing. Okay, so after you have that one, yeah, Cheryl, I think the whole um, clipping and just melting it totally solves the issue of it unraveling. I really like it. All right, so you wanna fold them right sides out, and now we're going to just top stitch along our zipper. I think I had my lining piece cut bigger than my, <laughs> my exterior piece. That's okay, I can trim it up. Am I using the right piece? Yes, I am. reading comments. Oh, yay, Susan. Give that baby a squeeze for me. Super awesome. Okay, I think I accidentally cut my lining piece um, a little bit bigger. That's okay. I just must have measured wrong um, when I was cutting out the bag. So you want to do the same exact thing on the other side of your zipper now. So I've got my smaller gusset piece and I'm going to match my centers and baste and then add my lining. Same thing. If you're just joining, I'm sewing the Conan Bowler bag from Country Cow Designs. making the zipper panel. Hi, Karen. Yes, thank you. I am feeling much better. You had a jersey. Wow, that's so exciting. I'm excited for you. You're gonna have to post pictures of all of that, Kajersti. Um, the purple lining is just waterproof canvas from fabric.com. This one is just the otter text from fabric.com. All right, so just put on your lining, make that sandwich right there. Okay. 
and sew that on. Zips out of the way. Okay. Oh, Cindy, you can do the speed well. It is not that hard. It really is not. You can do it. Is the vinyl similar to Rex? Um, I would say it's, it, well, it's smooth and it's, oh, it's just such a great thickness. It's not too thin. I just absolutely love this, um, this vinyl roll. It is, she's got other colors too in this solid vinyl and I absolutely love it all. All right, so now I'm just top stitching. All right, those two. Okay, so there is my top zipper panel. What I'm gonna do now, let's see if I got this right. So this is my lining part of the bottom gusset. Yeah, I cut my lining a little bit too big accidentally. So I'm gonna trim that down, just double checking and making sure. And then get your, you know, this is my bottom part of my gusset. I'm just making sure that it is the same width as my zipper panel. Because if you use a different seam allowance on this zipper, your panel could be different um, sizes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to sew this, baste it all together. Because we want this just, oh, actually no. Don't do this yet. This side's fine. Actually, don't do this other side yet. Because we need to put the handle on and to put the handle on we have to be able to flip the lining out of the way so don't do that yet but i am going to trim this down so it is the correct size again this is just my mistake cutting this pattern out so you shouldn't have this extra little piece of lining this was just my mistake that's what it should look like okay so let's put on our handle. So our handle is going right there. And uh, Crystal, you didn't miss that much. We're just doing the top zipper panel right now. All right, so what you wanna do is kind of find the middle of this panel as a whole so you can fold it in half. It's about right there. What I have learned is you want your handle, I mean, pretty stinking close. Wait, which way does the bag go? It goes this way, I want my handle. I'm just making sure my print is the right way. Um, you want this handle placed pretty dang close to your top stitching of this zipper panel. So it'll be about right there. And you will have, you know, extra like that because you have to have room for that little handle to pop up. Okay. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape. And I think it is, how big is? Two and a half inches of double-sided tape here. I'm just going to one, two and a half right there. And I'm gonna stick it down on this side here. 
and then I'll do the same on the other side. All right. Right there. And now what I'm going to do is we have these markings that we did before. I'm going to stick this on my bag and I'm going to sew at an eighth of an inch seam allowance up to that first marking across and down on both sides. Although, no, just kidding. I'm just going to do one side to start. And you want to flip your lining piece out of the way. I am just sewing on my exterior. So if you want, you can clip this lining piece to the other side here so it stays out of your way. And just make sure wherever you put it on this panel that it's even on both ends. So I'm gonna put mine about right there. Okay, I'm gonna sew that on at one eighth inch. Seam allowance up to that first mark and over and down. Okay, so that's my first part of my handle. We want to put our D rings on. So I'm going to put my D rings on. And you want to slide just one on right now. Okay. Now your next marking is kind of put your D ring on there. Okay. So now I'm going to sew from my next marking here to this one right up here in a rectangle, just like I did right there. And that will sew the D-ring on and the handle on. And yeah, to that first line. Okay, here we go. And I'm just trying to make this as straight as possible on my bag. Make sure it's, if you really wanted to, you could put a piece of double-sided tape under there to get it to stay exactly where you want it to be, and that would work. Okay. Now, make sure if you have a walking foot that you're protecting it on your hardware, so I'm gonna have to put a piece of scrap back here just so my walking foot does not tear up my D-ring area because it will rip that vinyl right up if you don't protect it. All right. And I'm just going up here to this line. And across. And there we go. Okay, did I miss anything? Um, I would suggest Frankie trying the 45. Um, Holly that I saw on my site. I'm pretty sure your Juki TL, I'm pretty sure people can use that one on that machine. I'm pretty positive. Okay, so I've got this D-ring on. You see how that's on now? So I am going to slide my other D-ring on. Do not forget to slide your other D-ring on. 
you will be sad if you forget. <laughs> and now I'm going to do this other side the same way. And then I will put all of my rivets into my handle. Hi, Linda. Thank you. All right. So you just want to make sure whatever you're doing here, it's even with the other side. And that looks good. So I'm going to do my first little stitching to that first line. this D ring down right there and I will finish that stitching from these next two lines and see when I'm done it leaves your handle popping up right there okay there you go thank you lighter weight in your bobbin perfect and I am gonna start right there It's kind of, she suggests in the pattern using a thread that somewhat um, blends in with whatever material you're using. Just because there's so much stitching along this handle, if you make a mistake, it's more obvious. So, um, can anyone answer my question? What was your question, Watson? I don't see her question. Oh, there you go. Yes, it's vinyl, it's vinyl. All right, so now I'm gonna put in all of my rivets, all right? All right, let's do that real quick. So, I'm sorry, I got mixed up here. There we go. Now, I'm going to do some rivets along my handle. I'm going to do one on each side of my D-ring and then um, right by my handle, okay? So I still have my lining out of my way. And I am going to put in my rivets. Make sure it goes all the way through there. This is just a Japanese hole punch. You can get them on Amazon. I have them on my little Amazon store front. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side here. my strap and do those while we're doing all of these rivets. Lots of layers. It takes some punches. This is not wanting to go through all my layers. I could get my hand punch. 
Hello, 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 everybody. What kind of rivet press? This is just um, this is just an off-brand rivet press here from Amazon. I also have a cam press. The nice thing about getting a cam press is that the attachments and dies are easier to find with this. Amazon one, the attachment and dies are a little harder to figure out. So that would be my one pro slash con. All right. Okay, so let's just put our rivets on. Sorry, I usually do this off camera, but I guess that's okay, right? Nothing fancy about this. One right there, one right here. I am using nine millimeter rivets, which I pretty much use almost on all of my bags. The nine millimeter seems to be the size that I use the most, unless it's really not a bigger area, you could use a shorter one. Um, if I'm doing leather, I usually need a longer post, but for all my vinyl and cotton bags, this seems to be the right size for me. All right. So are these rivets absolutely necessary on this middle part? No, but it sure gives you a little bit extra in the look and in the reinforcement. I don't know, I just think rivets really add something awesome to bags. I really like them. So that's, do you see my rivets there? So one, two, three, I'm gonna do the same thing along this side. And then I can baste all of my layers together, okay? And I am using matte rainbow hardware. I sell it on my website. I absolutely love it. It is one of my favorites. They're so gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to put these ones on and we will head to the next. All right, all of our rivets are on. Put that aside. Put these away. All right, so now I'm going to just baste zipper panel all together. All right. Here we go. I think in the pattern she doesn't have you basting this all together until the gusset is added, but I like to do it now. Here we go, panel is done. So now we're gonna add our bottom gusset pieces. Hi, Kalisha, how are you? Okay, so I have my bottom. I've already got my purse feet on. They're just screw purse feet that I actually sell on my website as well. I put a dab of glue in the hole and then I screwed them on. And then I covered them with some tape just to be extra sure that they're not going anywhere. All right, so first I'm going to baste my bottom gusset piece on here. Hi, Leslie. I was gonna say, aren't you supposed to be grooming a doggy right now? All right, so I'm basting this 
Exterior on first. Now, this is where your thickness can get pretty big right here if you're using vinyl. So I would only suggest doing the vinyl if your machine can handle the thickness. If you are sewing on a domestic, she suggests in the pattern as well to use cotton for your handle, all right? So just be aware of that. All right, so now I'm putting on my lining right side, just like the zipper panel, you know, uh, right sides together and we're sandwiching our zipper panel in the middle. All right, and we're gonna sew that on. Happy New Year, Norway. <laughs> Drying her, oh, good luck, Leslie. Leslie's doing a professional competition grooming her dog. She's awesome. I just dropped all my clips. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to flip both layers out, and I'm going to top stitch along my gusset here. up in a minute. Gotta love it. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I'm going to take this and do the same thing to the other side and we're going to make a circle, a big circle with the gusset, okay? Here we go. So I'm basting my exterior first. And I'll sew on the lining. Here we go. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So now I'm sewing them all together. Here. And then I want to top stitch all of those layers. Sue, you're not that, it's not that far in, you're good. Okay, so now I want to top stitch this one, which is a little bit more tricky, but totally doable. You can do it. Just kind of pull your layers all out here. So now we want to baste our bottom part of our gusset that we just sewed all together. So it's one big piece, okay? So we've got a circle here, but we want this part to be connected. So what I'm gonna do is kind of clip it as I go here. So it's all in the right place. And then I will baste it all together. Hi, Deborah, welcome. Pick up some of my clips that I dropped. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to do the other side as well. Will this work on a... I don't know if it will work on a heavy-duty Singer machine. I am not... 
I am not very knowledgeable in all the different types of machines. But I'm sure somebody in this group would know. There's always somebody who has the same machine as you, I've learned. Okay, here we go. I am just basting these two layers together now, okay? So we have a full circle. And I already did my top panel pieces, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay. Hi, Susan. Hazel, thank you. I love this rainbow hardware too. It's the matte rainbow from my website. have my gusset all done. I am going to clip my center down here just so I have that already done because you will need to know where your centers are at. Okay. So go ahead and do that on your bottom gusset piece here. And then your top should already be clipped. Yep. My top's already clipped. So we're good. All right. So I'm going to put that aside. Oh my and real quick, I'm just gonna put on my label because I haven't done that. So I am just going to sew on my label real quick. And then we'll work on our lining. And then we'll put this thing together. Um, I'm just trying to find my center. I needed it anyways. I need to clip it anyways for putting the whole bag together, but I'm just trying to find the middle here for my tag. I'm just doing a little leather tag on this bag because I don't have matte hardware of my nameplate yet. They're on their way. Maybe, there it goes. Okay. About right there. Okay, I'm gonna sew that on real quick. All right, so I have my name tag on. I am going to go to my lining of pieces here. Here we go. So I am not doing the card slot um, panel like she has in the pattern. I'm just doing a zipper pocket, but I am doing this netting slip pocket. I just got it from a craft store, okay? And all she does is put this binding on top. All right, sorry, let me catch up in this pattern here. Make sure I'm telling you guys all the right things. Tracy, thank you. They're heartwood and hide. Heartwood and hide are my leather tags. She does such an amazing job with her tags. I love them so much. Okay, so I am just putting a piece of double-sided tape on here on the top of my netting just so everything stays put for me, okay? I 
All right. And then I'm going to put this on. I'm going to try and get it right up in that crease as best I can. You can just use clips as well, up to you. Okay, so there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that down. I know, mesh isn't the my most favorite thing to work with either, but I do love how it looks in this bag, so I decided to do it. I did in my last bag just use this pattern piece of this slip pocket and make a fold over cotton slip pocket. And that works as well. If you don't wanna do the mesh, you don't have to. Um, it's up to you. I'm gonna do a double row of stitching up here. put this on my pocket. I'm going to get my centers clipped real quick. Yeah, I think this does look really cute on the top of pockets, this binding. I think it's a great little accent. I agree. Okay, so I'm just going to put my pocket on there. And I'm going to stitch it on and I'm going to set, well, does she separate it? Let's see. No, she doesn't. She just does one big pocket. All right, we're just gonna sew on this pocket then. All right. And then we just have to do our zipper pocket on the other side. Again, I'm not doing the card slots. So if you're doing the card slots on the other side, just follow her pattern for that. Use fold over elastic on your mesh. Hey, yeah, Hazel, that would work as well. That works for binding as well. The fold over elastic. I've heard many people use that. Lots of different cool options. All right. That is that. Really super easy, kind of different. Um, for the inside of your bag. All right, so I'm gonna do my zipper pocket on the other side. I just kind of guessed on my zipper pocket piece. It's like 10 by seven and a half is what I did. I'm kind of just eyeballing this since it's not in the um, pattern. And I usually measure an inch down from the top and mark out my my rectangle for my zipper. And I'm gonna grab my water real quick, just a minute. I'm really thirsty. Just out of my reach. Okay. Um, Jersey, I used a little bit of a smaller stitch when I added that mesh, yes. 
just to make sure you catch it all. But you also are going to be sewing over that a couple more times when we do our binding. So, um, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't worry too much about a short stitch length with that. Okay, here we go. So I'm just eyeballing where to place this pocket. Getting my centers. I think about right there, maybe move it down just a touch. You just wanna make sure that it's out of all of your, you know, seam allowances there. Okay, I'm gonna sew that on. My boot gets in the way down here. It's gotten caught under my pedal before, and that has not been good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna sew this zipper pocket on here. Let me turn on my iron real quick. All right, here we go. This is my favorite way to do zipper pockets. It's just easy and quick. Um, nothing too fancy about it, and it uses just one piece. It is not the fanciest looking zipper pocket or the classiest, but I don't think it's horrible. I like it. <laughs> Welcome. All right. Okay, cutting out this pocket. I think I need a new blade. Mine's kind of dull. Yes, my boot gets hot, Tracy, for sure. And I just learned yesterday that my incision site for my surgery is infected so now I have to take antibiotics again for the third time in the last month so that's awesome <laughs> all right so I'm just pulling this through to the other side I'm going to take it over to my iron very carefully and I'm only going to press on this cotton side all right a little messy over here there's my iron Nothing fancy. I still have not replaced this old broken iron. One of these days I will. <laughs> One of these days. All right, so I'm just folding it. Waterproof canvas is kind of a pain um, when you're doing pockets, but it looks so good when you're done. So I'm just keeping my iron on my cotton piece. Usually I if I need to do it directly onto the canvas, I use a Teflon press sheet, okay? But that gets it down enough that I'll be able to put my zipper on. Yep, looks good. All right, here we go. See, isn't that pretty guys, my boot? So pretty, so fancy. It's so fun walking in the snow with it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's put our zipper in. I'm just gonna put this ruler right there for a minute. All right, I like to do double-sided tape on my zippers so they don't go anywhere. All right. Thank you, Crystal, I'm sure it will. It's just my luck lately. It's just one thing after the next. All right. All 
I may have to wind another bobbin here soon before we finish putting this whole thing together. I'll have to remember to do that. Okay, here we go. Um, Crystal, hopefully only one more week. I've had it on for three and a half weeks now, I think. Since before Christmas, it feels like forever. Being sick and having issues with your foot is not a fun combination. I've been quite a baby lately around my house. <laughs> All right. I like to put on one side at a time with my zippers just so I can get it placed correctly. So now I'm going to take off the bottom tape here. Yes, Crystal, when it rains, it pours for sure. That has been my life lately. All right. It could be worse though. So that's okay. There we go. My zipper's in. I'm going to sew around that. And then I think that's the last step. And then we just start putting this whole bag together. The fifth time for COVID. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't even imagine. Just getting it once was enough for me. <sighs> Deborah, I do deserve to be a baby every once in a while. I don't know if my family agrees with that, but I do. <laughs> Hi from Germany. Hi, Sandra. Okay. Let's fix them that right there. All right, here we go. this little thread spot right there. Now I just want to close up my pocket and then we're done. And I'm not leaving a hole in my pocket because we're doing binding. And I know some people do not enjoy binding. For those people, I mean, I suppose you could put this bag together a different way, but I feel like binding it is probably the easiest, best way to do this style of bag. That's just my opinion, though. Um, Lori, I love my embroidery machine so, 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 so much. I need to find some more projects to do with it. I did quite a bit over Christmas with it. Just making hand towels and I embroidered our Christmas pajamas and fun stuff like that. All right, I'm just trimming my side down just a little bit here. You really don't want any of this in your seam allowance. So if your pocket is too big, it's going to be hard to sew it all up. So make sure that it is not getting into your seam allowance. All right, so next side. Guys, we're almost there. Let's see here. I want to get, so that's done. I want to get my pieces of my exterior and my lining. You're going to put them wrong sides together. Okay, just like that. And now we are going to baste these all together. 
because we are going to be binding our edges. So go ahead and clip those up. Christmas jammies, yeah, pajamas. We have Christmas jammies um, on New Year's Eve. I usually get them matching. And I embroidered everybody's nickname on their shirt. It was super cute. <laughs> okay, so I am going to baste these two pieces together and then I will do the other side. So that's one side. Get your other piece. Wrong sides together. Your right sides are out. Okay. And go ahead and same thing. Baste those together. need too many clips just enough to keep them from not moving too much okay kind of baste those So that is really all four pieces because I didn't do a card slot. I just did a zipper pocket on that one. All right, front, back, and then you have your gusset. All right, so I'm gonna move this out and up just a little bit for this next part. This makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see. All right, here we go. I'm gonna need lots of clips and we're gonna put this thing together. So I think this is the front of my bag and I tend to forget what's the front of this bag. I think it's the smaller gusset. Let me double check. Let me double check guys. Yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. So I have my centers clipped on my gusset and my piece. All right. So what you're going to do is you want this inside out, your gusset piece inside out. I'm gonna take one more drink, just a minute. All right, so I want to line up my centers along this, okay? So I did have issues with my first one of my panels being too big for my gusset. So I don't know if it was something I did wrong or, or what. So we'll see how this one lines up. My solution was to trim down my panels just a little bit and then it fit. So there is a solution if that is the case again. So I am clipping my right sides together, okay? So you should be looking at the wrong side or the lining of each of your pieces right now. Sorry. Here we go. Now we are gonna need to do some clipping into our, our gusset. Let me see. This is gonna fit a little bit better. See, mine seems to have quite a bit of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the tiniest snips. Like I'm staying in that eighth of an inch 
basting stitch right there. And I am just going to do some clips along my gusset. And that will help it all line up and fit more smooth. Definitely down here on your corner. Make sure you clip there, okay? So like my clips are super tiny. I don't know if you can tell, super tiny, okay? And do it along this one. I'm just going to unclip that there so I can put some clips in. All right, now let's get this in there. The same thing happened to you? Yeah, I just wasn't sure if it was me or, <laughs> or what, but my panel seems a little bit big. All right, here we go. So now we wanna get this all fitted in there nicely. So I'm going to go along my two corners first, okay? And I'm kind of stretching my gusset a little bit as I go. All right. And I think the clips really do help with this pattern. So I highly, highly suggest the clipping into your gusset on this pattern. came in. Hi, sweetheart. I'm going to lay down. All right. Okay. I'm going to do the other side here. Yeah, if you have to trim up your panel, trim up your panel. It's not the end of the world. Like, that's just fine. I didn't trim, I'm trying to do this without trimming on this one to see if I can get it to work. Um, but I did trim my first bag. I wasn't sure if it was me that made a mistake on my first one or what. So I'm gonna try it without trimming up my pattern, my panel. And it seems to be fitting so far. I think we can do it. I am like kind of stretching where I clipped on my gusset out as I clip, and it really does help. I don't know, yeah, I may on my next one, maybe shave a fourth of an inch off my panel, maybe. We'll see how this, we'll see how this one sews up, okay. So I've got that all in. I'm gonna go ahead and first I'm gonna baste it. Then I will sew it at a fourth. You don't have to do it that way. Um, I just feel like it goes a little more smoothly when I do it that way. Okay, I think I can baste and then I'm gonna have to fill up a new bobbin. I don't have any extra bobbins right now. So I'm gonna have to use that one. Okay. Let's do this. And I, I am going to switch you guys to this side. Hi, everybody. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, I feel like basting really does help um, with bags like this. I highly, highly suggest it. That or I'm pretty sure Joe from Country Cow, this pattern, suggests um, hand stitching. So it's up to you. All right, I like to start on the bottom of my bag here. And we are just gonna baste this bad boy up. Here we go. And I love using this stiletto tool. I do feel like it's a learning curve um, using it. But with things like this where you need to hold it but you need to take the clip off, it really does help. Because now I can hold it right there and it can get pretty close to the foot and I don't have to worry about it taking off my finger. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to unzip. It does help if you unzip this panel too. <laughs> yeah, Marley Mae's in her bed. I don't think she doesn't understand why I can't do walks. I suppose I could, I don't know. And I do so gusset up, my panel is down. This does seem to be the best way to sew these on. If you try it the other way where your gusset is underneath, I feel like um, there's more room for air and you can't kind of see when you get wrinkles. So I would highly suggest doing it this direction. And that's from me having lots of practice doing both ways, like, yeah. And my panel is fitting into my gusset okay. I really think clipping, doing those clips really helps. Have I ever sewn my finger? Um, not with my industrial, knock on wood. I have never sewn my finger. With my regular machine, yes, many times. I feel like that's a rite of passage. Yeah, you could totally hand stitch first. I'm just not a big um, hand stitcher. I don't, I don't love it. But you could baste this first by hand. And that's, again, that's what the designer does. Okay, so I am gonna show you a couple of spots. So do you see how it kind of slipped up there? That's okay, I'm just gonna trim that down and you really won't be able to tell when the bag is done that it slipped a little there. So don't stress out about parts like that, okay? I am just going to trim this down a little even because when you are adding the binding, you kind of want this all even. Okay. And look, I'm not perfect, but the bag is still gonna turn out fabulous. Right here I slipped too and it's okay. All right. So I'm gonna go around one more time and this time I'm gonna do a 1 4th inch seam allowance, okay? Yell at me if my bobbin runs out. <laughs> and it is a little tricky getting around where your heavier stabilizer is right here. Just go slow around your corners and kind of flatten it out as you go.
There it is. So it looks good on the inside. I don't have any, any wrinkles or anything like that. So it looks great. Um, I do need to wind a bobbin real quick and then we will add the binding. All we have to do is do that on both sides. Oh, come here, bobbin. Um, we just have to do that on both sides, add our binding and we're done. And that is the bag. So I may not add the second part of binding just for time's sake. Oh, come on. There it is. Hi, Elaine. Oh, you like my shirt? <laughs> Isn't it cute? <laughs> I couldn't resist. I did get a neat new heat press that I have been um, excited to get out and I just haven't had the time to put it out. I was thinking of doing a live, getting my new heat press out and kind of reviewing it. And I got some subliminations for t-shirts to try. So have I ever glued the binding versus sewing? I haven't. I haven't. I wouldn't. I would be scared that gluing it wouldn't last. But maybe that, would you glue and then you sew? Um, that would make me nervous. All right, so I am binding with just waterproof canvas this time around. Um, it's just a one inch strip of waterproof canvas and I just sandwich my raw edge and I just go around. So very simple. Almost there. All right. Here we go. Back in business. I need to get more bobbins for my machine. I've got too many colors of thread now. And thank you, Diane. All right, here we go, guys. We're gonna put on my waterproof canvas. So like I said, it's just a strip. Now you can use this, you can use bias tape, like, it's, it's up to you. Um, this is just easy. I always have it on hand. It matches the inside of my bag perfectly. I like that part that I can just match it all up and it really isn't noticeable um, when you're looking in the bag because it matches so nice. Okay, so I like to fold it first and give it that crease. And now I am just going to clip it on. Like I said, I just sandwich. I just sandwich my, my edge there. It really isn't, this really isn't hard to do. Pretty simple. I would say the hardest thing is just like these little corners right here. But even that's not bad. Once you get to this part, you're pretty much in the home stretch. Hi from Germany. I do put quite a few clips on it. <clears throat> My other thought is you could do double-sided tape, but I would be afraid that it would gum up my needle. So I haven't done that either. And again, this is just a one inch strip. So you really could adjust the strip depending on what your seam allowance is. But I think with this bag, the one inch was plenty for me.
And I do get sometimes a wrinkle or two in these corners, but again, it is the corner of your bag. And if you are looking in your bag, you cannot see these corners unless you're the one who made it and you know it's there. <laughs> All right. There we go. And I just need to trim this up just a tiny bit. I think this um, strip was a little more than 36 inches long is what I did, I'm pretty sure. All right, so that is what I have. Okay, now I'm just going to sew this on. And I just try and stay kind of close to the edge. It's about a fourth of an inch. Um, seam allowance that I use. I just do that. I could probably do a three eighths, but I don't know. I'm going to do a fourth. So there, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Here we go. I like to start kind of above where I, um, overlapped. So right here on the bottom. And again, I like to sew this gusset side up. It just sews on better. It's more smooth. Oh, my foot's up. And again, a stiletto tool is your best friend. Use it if you can. Everybody's quiet. Is everybody holding their breath? <laughs> All right, we're almost there. Hi, Geronimo. My foot, my left foot went a little crazy. All right. Here we are. Now just make sure, look on both sides. Uh, got it, it looks good. So I'm gonna turn this out so you can just see how nice it looks. And then we'll sew on the other panel, panel and then we'll be done. It's not frozen on you guys, is it? Okay. So I'm just turning this out real quick so you can see what 
we just did, okay? The binding just gives your bag such a nice shape. I just really like it. All right, so here is her bag so far. Let me get all my edges out. How awesome is that? Okay, this is our bag. Isn't that cool? That's such a cute little bag. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back through and put on the other side. We can do this. How long is this video so far? Okay, <clears throat> here we go. I don't know if I've ever done a live for a binded bag. I don't know. All right, so I turned it back through. All right, so now we're gonna add the other side to it. So same process, okay? Um, I am going to go ahead and clip my gusset right here. Do all my little clips. Make it so it goes in there nicely. It is such a cute little bag, guys. I absolutely love it. It is adorable. I made one for my son's girlfriend. Hopefully she likes it. It is a great shape. All right, lots of little clips here. I'm telling you it helps though. So if you're struggling with it fitting, clip it. Okay. Here we go. Does the WC make it? Um, it might. It really, I mean, along here, it really isn't that thick for binding. Um, I, I'm positive my domestic could handle that. The only part I would be worried about is where the seams meet for your gusset. Um, that is the only thick part on this whole, um, on this whole piece. So the, the waterproof canvas doesn't make it that thick. I don't think. I have made the Oro Rosa bags that I have binded have had a lot thicker seams than this one. If that gives you a good, you know, a good comparison. I don't think, did I clip my center? There it is. Right there. Um, the vinyl came like this. I ordered it, Deborah. This is vinyl that I ordered like this and gosh where did I get this one um I think this one was ember oh what's it called shoot something ember oh my gosh my brain is not working anybody know what I'm talking about Twisted Ember. Twisted Ember. That's where I got this one. Then, Elaine, then you won't have any problems with this one.
My go-to for cotton canvas fabric is Hawthorne Threads, Rebecca. I love Hawthorne Threads. Almost there, guys. You are welcome, Rebecca. baste this first just like we did with our other side and then we will sew it at the full seam allowance okay I think we're there all right second side here we go again I like to sew it with the gusset up so when you do the second side, it is a little harder. I won't lie. It is a little harder just because we have all of this to kind of squish and um, go under there. Just take your time. It is doable. It's just a little bit more tricky, okay? All right, let me get a drink before we attempt this. It's just water. <laughs> Are there t different types of vinyl for bag? You mean for bag? Oh, for bag making? There are lots of different types of vinyl. There are lots of different weights and feels and backing and, right? Um, textured and smooth and there's lots of different. All right, here we go. Like I said, it's a little bit more tricky because now we have to kind of squish everything in there, okay? Basting first. Um, Lori, <laughs> I just bought a new heat press and I haven't tried it out yet. I got mine off of Amazon. It's a big heat press, but if you're just looking for a beginner, just getting started heat press, I would just, whoa, my stiletto slipped. Um, I would just look on like your next door, not your next door, your like Craigslist type of place for people getting rid of old Singer steam presses. Those work so great for interfacing. That's what I have been using, but I wanted to upgrade to a bigger heat press, so. But for reals, garage sales, people getting rid of steam presses are awesome. Okay, even though when I clipped this on and I had wrinkles in my um, panel, when I lay it down like this with the gusset clipped, 
it kind of flattens out and makes it even. So even if you have wrinkles in your pattern when you've clipped it, when you go to sew it and it's down like this, it will flatten out with your gusset if you've clipped it. I hope that makes sense. Like mine has totally flattened out as I go because I have clipped into my gusset. Does that make sense? <clears throat> um, I can show you guys the heat press I got when I'm done doing this. I don't even know the name. I'll have to look at the box. It was an after Christmas special that I found on Amazon and I thought, let's try it. It just has like a bigger surface area, which I thought would be good for making these bags. That is my basting stitch. Again, do you see I have some corners that kind of slipped? Just trim those up, it's okay. They do not need to be perfect. All right, now I'm gonna go around at my seam allowance. Yeah, my Singer still totally works. It's a great little heat press. I just thought I would upgrade, that's all. It didn't break or anything. I just thought, why not? With how much I use it. Might even be nice to have two, I don't know. Okay, I'm not going to put the binding on this side for time's sake. It's just like I did on the other side. We'll go ahead and turn this out and look at our bag and see what we got. And I will put the binding on off camera. Hopefully that's okay with everybody. Because this pretty much is done after I sew this at my seam allowance. That is it. And then all I have to do is add the binding. Here we go. Let's look at our bag, guys. Let's see what we have, huh? Okay, so this is, so all I have to do is just add that binding on there, okay? It'll be just like that. It'll look like that when it's done. So let's just turn it out and see what we have. And then I'll put the strap on and you guys can see what it looks like. Because this video is long. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Do you guys have any last minute questions? <laughs> Not okay, I need to bind it now. <laughs> um, Marion, on my cutting table, I have 
a tutorial I'm doing that's not coming out till February because it's for somebody ahead of time. And I have the new Shambhala Josephina cut out actually. I was debating whether to record that one. That is what is on my cutting table right now. All right, oh, such a cute shape. I think this bag would be cute with an outside pocket too, like the classic handbag. Classic handbag's kind of like the same type of idea, but it has, um, it's bigger and it has an outside pocket to it. And I think that would be cute too. All right, here it is guys. Um, did I get my basement done before I had surgery? Yes, it is all organized and done. Okay. That, Josepha, that's what I meant. What did I say, Josephina? Josepha. That's what's on my cutting table right now is the Josepha. Okay, here's our adorable Conan bowler bag. How cute is that? I absolutely love it. I'll just go back and bind it later. Let's put our crossbody strap. Millie, sorry, which, ask a question again. I didn't see what you asked. It's just going too fast. Ask it again. Okay, there we go, guys. Look how cute that is. Yeah, wouldn't that be cute with a slip pocket back here? I think I might do that on my next one. Yay, go try this pattern out. Support an awesome designer. I love Jo from Country Cow. She is amazing. I absolutely love her style of pattern writing and teaching. She does a great job. And if my video doesn't do it for you, go check out her channel. She has amazing video tutorials for all of her patterns. This is smaller, traveling sewist. This is smaller than the classic handbag. Um, classic handbag's quite a big hefty bag. So this is definitely smaller than the classic handbag. Um, Lulu, which is easier? they're the same. They're the same level. This one in the classic handbag, one's not easier than the other. They're the same level. Um, uh, you want one of these shirts? I just got it made. I'm debating whether to make some with my new heat press. Okay, let's check out my heat press real quick. I'll show you what I got. Just don't judge the messiness of my room. Um, okay, here is my heat press that I just ordered. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. It is, gosh, what is that? I don't even know what it's called. Here, let's open it up. You guys get a little heat press reveal real quick. Let's do it. It has been sitting here for probably two weeks unopened. I have just not had the time. Oh gosh, I don't even know if I'll be able to get this out. All right, it is the Bells Better Sub, Better Sub Heat Press Machine. That is what I got. It's a 15 by 15 and it's purple. Ooh, it's purple. How awesome is that? I haven't even... I haven't even ever used one of these before, guys. There it is. I'm excited to play with it. I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys know how it works. Okay. That's it. Were there questions? Sorry, I couldn't read that. Um, I'll get it all out. I'll take some pictures of it. I'll try it out. I'll use it in a video maybe. Um, I got sublimination designs to try with it. So you have the same one, do you like it? Hopefully you like it. Um, the hardware for this bag is all from my website minus the zipper tape. I don't know where I got this zipper tape but everything else, this matte rainbow hardware is all from my website. So, and it's all in stock right now. So you should be able to purchase 
all of it. Here, let's get Marley May and we'll say goodbye. Come here, baby. Oh, come here. Oh, she was sleeping. All right, she's like, why did you wake me? Thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Go make this adorable, cute bowler bag. You won't regret it. <laughs> She's all, you woke me up. All right. Thank you for all the support. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.